Here's a diagram of the steam cycle that operates turbines that generate electricity. It's quite interesting. Let's look at its stages. First, water is heated in a boiler under pressure to temperatures above the normal boiling temperature, appreciably greater than 100 degrees Celsius, where it is turned into steam. The high pressure hot steam is directed to the turbine. Impact of the steam produces rotation, which drives an electric generator, which in turn produces electricity. Yum! After the steam exits the turbine, a bit tuckered out, it is directed to the condenser, a cooled tank for condensation. After condensation, a pump returns the water to where it started, the boiler. The process continues in cyclic fashion. For years I wondered, why the condenser? Why not bypass the condenser and send the spent steam directly back to the boiler? Isn't the condenser a waste? You cool the steam down, change it to water, but then heat it up again when it gets to the boiler. Something wasn't right here. What physics was I missing? And then came an aha moment while I was crunching cans by atmospheric pressure in my conceptual physics class. Here's my nephew and niece, Alla and Eric Wong, doing the same demo. You can do this yourself. I've got to say, it's most impressive. Put a small amount of water in an aluminum soda pop can and heat it on a stove or hot plate until steam issues from the opening. When this occurs, air has been driven out of the can and replaced by steam. Then, with a pair of tongs, do as Eric does and quickly invert the can into a pan of water. Nice Alla looks on. Crunch! The can is crunched by atmospheric pressure. What's the explanation? Steam molecules initially bounce from walls of the can with little or no energy loss. But what happens to the molecules when they encounter water from the pan? Do they bounce from the water surface? Or do they stick to the water, that is, condense? What's your answer? I hope you said that condensation of steam occurs which leaves a very low pressure inside the can. And how does the outside atmospheric pressure react with a low pressure can? That's right. Atmospheric pressure crushes the can. So how does this demo shed light on why the condenser in a steam turbine? Let's look at this in closer detail. Steam does work on the turbine by exerting pressure on the front side of the turbine blades. Pressure has to be greater on the front side of each blade than on the back to produce a net force on the turbine blade. It's important that pressure of steam on the back side of the blades is much reduced. Without a pressure difference, the turbine would not rotate and deliver energy to an external load, usually an electric generator. For net work to be done, it is vital that the pressure on the back side of the blades be reduced. But how? The answer is the same way pressure in Eric's soda pop can was reduced, by condensation. So whenever you contemplate the steam cycle of a turbine, pay heed to the vital condenser. Condensation ensures low pressure on the back side of the turbine blades. Essential. A question for you. Is this crunching can demo interesting enough to perform with your friends and entertain them with physics? That would be yum yum. Another classroom demo, less dramatic but quite yum, also nicely employs the roles of evaporation and condensation. That's the classic dipping bird. Here's a toy glass bird in two liquids, water in the drinking glass and a colored liquid inside the bird's body, methylene chloride, that rapidly evaporates at room temperature. Most of the air has been removed from the bird's interior during manufacture. So the clear space inside the body is mainly methylene chloride vapor. There is no significant air or water vapor inside the bird. The bird can pivot about its upper legs. To begin, the outside of the toy bird's head must be wet. Felt covering on the head and the beak that extends into the water glass with each cycle keeps the head wet for a longer time. Evaporation of water occurs on the wetted head. What effect does this have on the bird's head? That's right, temperature is lowered. Evaporation is a cooling process. 
This lower temperature produces condensation of vapor in the head, which decreases vapor pressure there relative to the vapor pressure in the warmer body below. The slightly greater pressure in the warmer lower body pushes liquid up the tube toward the region of reduced pressure. The liquid rises and the bird becomes top heavy. Its center of gravity extends beyond the pivot point at its legs and the bird pivots forward, as in C. The bottom of the tube is no longer completely submerged in a liquid. Vapor travels through the tube and into the head, displacing liquid there, which drains to the lower body, whereupon the bird restores to its upright position. Each pivot wets the felt surface of the beak and head, and the cycle is repeated. A yum illustration of evaporation and condensation. Yes? I want to leave you with a question. First, we know that evaporation of water in the bird's wet head cools it. Question. On a molecular level, why does this evaporation cool the head? Until next time, good energy. Mm -hmm.